thank you all for coming. Uh, just to introduce a bit how this uh, topic came out, um, I am myself really interested in this um, relation between art and theory because I have myself a more academical background. And when I was searching for um, an art school to study, I didn't find, like for me, what could be the right balance in between these two disciplines. So um, I still went to the refill, but I was getting more and more curious about it. And there's um, an alumni from Roosevelt that told me a while ago about the Dutch Art Institute, which these two uh, women are mm -hmm. initiated from. And um, uh, yeah, basically she was explaining what it was about, and I got in touch with the, the person who initiated the school, which is Gabrielle, but I don't know her family. Okay. Schleifen. 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 Yeah. Yes, and then she told me that to talk about this school specifically and about the subject, it would be even more relevant to invite alumni to present the school and to present how they deal with art in theory inside of the school and to open up discussions towards um, <coughs> what kind of problematic it raises and what other like, things it just underlines but seeing it or not seeing it in art education. So maybe now I can just... Yeah, it's Welsh. Um, my name is Sonia Kazowski. I'm uh, uh, an alumna of the Rietveld from 2014 approximately and we studied, I had a break of one year in between and then I started the Dutch Art Institute. Uh, graduated together with uh, Miriam, that will present herself <laughs> in a bit. Um, I think that we actually have another alumna of the die here by uh, co coincidence, and it's also interesting because this school is a very dynamic structure, so also like the experience that we will present and the ideas that we will uh, bring forward will be related to our location and our kind mm -hmm. of um, yeah, perception of how it is, what it is, uh, and where it might be going also in, with a certain connection to the school right now. Um, we basically want to invite you into a conversation. So the way we structure this kind of um, talk is that for short minutes, um, I will present a certain context in which uh, Miriam can present her practice and what led her um, into the Dutch Art Institute. Um, and I think that from there, um, there will be enough material to kind of ask questions for us to reply through examples from the die and kind of just engage in the conversation. So please ask everything from who we are and what we do to how it is or things that you're interested, interested about the school. Um, so basically I think, so like one of the things that why we wanted to structure this conversation like that is because we feel that um, one of the things that we do get got from the die also as a friendship and also as studio uh, partners is um, a way of discussing and a way of replying to each other and contextualizing each other's um, ideas and uh, thoughts. Um, I came from, I graduated at the photography department um, here at the Rietveld and I felt that I'm done with artistic practice because the issues and the um, materials that I was dealing with uh, coming from Israel and having certain political um, standpoints um, are pornographic in Europe and that's a position that I don't want to take. Um, and I was kind of like um, set off from being an artist and I thought about how can I be involved in different ways, maybe um, art therapy or how can I really come closer to um, having a, a, a role in society to a certain extent. And then I came to the Dutch Art Institute and one of the things that the first thing that caught my interest and kind of uh, got me in, into reshaping my practice was uh, basically understanding why is it um, that in Europe my practice as an Israeli artist is con uh, considered in a certain way. That in itself opened a whole trajectory of art uh, history, art critique and aesthetic uh, theory. Um, and through this, I could position myself um, to begin with. But um, there, like Barbara, you raised the question of like, uh, uh, or you brought the, the question of why is there so many PhD programs uh, now of art and that there is only a bigger amount of them at the moment, especially in Europe. And the context that I would like to bring to this conversation is the fact that in, during the 90s, after, of course, the European Union had become what it is as a financial um, 
as a financial unit, one of the things that happened was uh, standard standardization standardization of uh, higher education models. So um, instead of having like very fluid ways of uh, considering what art education is, you or any education is, you have four years of bachelor, two years of masters, and then you have the third higher education, which is PhD. And that also, of course, it's an economical and political decision that also has to do with the fact that, or one of the movements that happened at the same time is the cuts in budget for arts, um, and that arts had to prove um, that they have a certain uh, contribution to society in a certain way, that means that they had to professionalize. And then this whole notion of artistic research became, suddenly it's not about um, individual production of uh, sensitivities, it's not local artistic practices, suddenly the notion of like this European artist that is traveling from place to place and uh, becoming like this international figure, um, that's inherent as well from other models that we're not going to get into. Um, suddenly it also influences um, the way we practice, what we practice, and what tools uh, we also ask for in order to professionalize in a certain extent. One of the changes that happens because of that is, for example, in order to become an art teacher or a teacher in an academy, you start to need to have to prove that you have a PhD, um, which I'm not going to get into the positive, negative, or in the complexity of it also on an aesthetic level, but this is basically the the context in which um, I think Miriam can present like her move from an applied uh, graphic designer coming from a, a practice of 10 years into like the necessity or feeling the necessity to go um, uh, and study um, a master in art that will also uh, give her a more theoretical backbone rather than a studio practice. Um, because basically that's one of the thing that's one of the models that dies kind of um, criticizes by um, producing a new condition is that a master study is not anymore within the confines of a private studio, but rather it's about the communal meeting point, it's about thinking, and it's completely post-medium kind of uh, way of articulating ideas. Whether it's good or not, we can, or positive or negative, I think it's a more complex question, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna just uh, forward yeah. the word to Miriam. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm Miriam. I, uh, I'm here from the Netherlands and I studied uh, at the Rietveld uh, graphic design. Um, graduated in 2005. And um, so, as Sonia said, I've been working as a graphic designer um, after graduation. Uh, I actually moved to Paris, so I lived there and worked there for some time. Um, and while I was there, um, I also started working on this uh, series of projects with um, a fellow alumni of Rietveld, uh, Samir Farouk. Um, we were both each working as graphic designers in different places. And we kind of started this series of projects um, that sort of was around the notion of representation, um, how heritage institutions as museums speak about culture and history. Um, and um, so I just want to briefly talk about, about one project and mostly the experience of it. So I won't be talking too much about the content of it, um, which we can always perhaps talk about later. Um, but in uh, 2013, uh, we did a project in Cairo. Um, and so this was a few years after uh, the 2011 uprisings in Cairo. Um, and during which time a lot of things happened, uh, amongst which the lootings of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So a number of objects were stolen um, or damaged. And we kind of saw it as this opportunity to, um, to ask people there, so inhabitants of Cairo, how might these gaps that have now fallen in the archive of this museum be filled up with nowadays objects? Um, and so we, we did this in the, in the context of a residency in Artalewa, which is a neighborhood about 20 minutes out of, the, out of downtown. And uh, we set up a studio space. We invited um, people from the neighborhood to come in and bring an object. We would photograph it. Um, and uh, talk with the people about the story behind the object. Um, 
And so while we were working there, uh, we were hearing stories and rumors of um, new protests that were being planned um, against uh, then President Morsi. So people were unhappy about um, certain changes that he wanted to implement. Um, and these protests were going to happen on the 30th of June. And so as that date came closer, we could sort of feel the excitement about this growing um, conversations we were having with people would go political. And we started wondering what would we, what would we do on that day? Because, you know, it's going to be this mass protest. Um, will we still go out and go places, do our thing? Or will we stay in and work in our studio? Um, and the people of the residency were like, well, why don't you take a day off? And you could go to one of the hotels on Zonalik Island, which is an area um, with kind of posh hotels. For a few bucks, you sit at the pool. So I'm going to just show you a brief clip of that moment. So we went to, um, we, we were sitting at this pool, which is right on the Nile. Um, um, So here's the pool, there's the Nile, and across the Nile were the protests um, happening. And so you could actually hear the people chanting when the wind was coming our way. And to me, it was this moment of confrontation of what am I doing here? I'm this white Dutch artist uh, doing this project here in Egypt. Um, and so it was this kind of awkward but also telling moment of, um, you know, what is, what, is your, what is your place? What is your, this discrepancy of, um, of this privilege that you're sensing? Um, and I... I think it played a role in later uh, going to the Dai and wanting to, um, yeah, understand more about my position within my own practice, but also my practice within art. Um, and I felt that theory um, would, you know, be a way to historicize, contextualize, and structure these ideas. Um, I think in my case also to understand these mechanisms of exclusion, of privilege, and how you know, history or stories around culture are constructed. Um, and so kind of after having lived and worked in Paris for almost 10 years and having done you know, kind of site-specific projects like this, um, I went to the Dai, so I came back to the Netherlands. And that also confronted me with my cultural background, so being from a white uh, Dutch family in Apeldoorn, um, you know, relating to that Dutch context. And, um, yeah, I think it, at the die, that sort of gave me a focus and, and a space um, to, to work on that trajectory, to, to focus on my place here, you know, focus on this situation with, in this case, uh, Dutch cultural history, um, and to relate to, in this case, Dutch heritage institutions and what their role would be. I think that, like, if to zoom out and come back to a larger context, like, I think that this model of, like, us from Europe going to residences and different um, exotic supposedly locations in which we can afterwards come back to the studio and then tell what happened in that place and how things are horrible there and this is something that it, as an Israeli I really encountered that I could in the art world take one position which is like oh there is occupation uh, it's bad mm -hmm. and I'm here therefore I'm good I'm on the good side of history and suddenly like you understand especially like this video of Miriam that I think is very telling exactly on this position is that we're not in the studio. We are all the time in conjunction with a specific historical moment. 
and that in order to understand that, we need to theorize the context in which we are as artists, artists as um, yeah, as mm -hmm. as uh, yeah. specific backgrounds, specific you, color, specific. How do you, as an artist, relates to a specific place, and how can you produce meaningful encounters while you're sustaining your art practice? Also, like, what is meaningful? What is valuable? Because we kind of it's it's not that we already are clear that our value is not being defined only on a monetary value or only, um, especially in um, in the Netherlands, it's very. Um, seeing that like the ethical value of things become also a measurement in which uh, things are being traded if you see it in institutions or uh, discourses and it's not necessarily that the production will be <clears throat> a text production but I think that for example one of the things that the die is different than any other uh, um, master of arts and like it's also important to say that within this standard of PhDs and stuff that I really insisted on becoming not an MFA, not a Master of Fine Arts, but a Master of Arts, which makes the transition towards a PhD and towards other academic institutions um, smoother in a sense of like the standard that is being established is that it doesn't ask you to go towards an exhibition. So one of the things that happens is that um, it's actually, you have four presentations to make during your two years. These presentations are within 20 minutes, and you can do whatever it is you want to do with these 20 minutes. It's from lecture to lecture performance to, um, I don't know, a poetic uh, reading or whatever. But it also is influencing the type of work that is being produced, and I think that you guys sitting in a studio, you can really see the difference when you really need to work with material and investigate the material versus when you are in a, school that is only meeting, uh, like you meet once in a month for a week. Now they're even roaming each week to a different place in Europe, but before that it was that we're traveling to Arnhem, whether so from... So beforehand, you don't even know where you're going to be presenting. You don't yeah. know what the space will be like, you don't know what the conditions will be like, you don't know if whatever technical um, uh, things that you need, if they'll be available. Yeah, and... It's time to kind of play into what you were saying of going to different exotic locations though? Well, the, the difference is, so first of all, um, yes, definitely. And one of the things that we talked before is that it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily that it's um, erased all critique that we can from what it is to be a privileged artist from Europe, because we all are, whether we are coming from Israel or Egypt or in the Netherlands, we're all, if we manage to go to an art school in Europe, we're all privileged enough to do so. It doesn't matter like how much money your parents have. It's just like the the opportunity to have um, the, um, how do you say it, the approach or the... Yeah, to, to go at all. Yeah, to go yeah. at all. Um, so it doesn't necessarily um, erase the, the contradictions. So for example, our first year, um, we all went as a school to Indonesia, as a Dutch school to Indonesia, because Charles Etcher, the head of the Van Abbe Museum, was curating the Jakarta Biennial a white male from a Dutch museum going create the, the Jakarta Biennial, not even gonna say what horrible things he said in the presentation, but like, so you're in this, but you're implicated. Suddenly you cannot say, stay in your studio and say, oh, the bad things are happening there. You suddenly really have to own your position, understand why things are the way they are, where are you in this power relation within the world and the cultural production, and then what kind of position do you take? Of course, you as a student can also say, well, you know what, I'm not going. But we also all chose to go to a very specific master program, right? Like, so it's not, nobody forced us, nobody, uh, we weren't abused or anything to do such a thing. But so you all went? Yeah, we all went. We went as a school and we did different projects and we participated in different ways. And we also dealt with the critique that was basically, first of all, directed towards us. How come we, as a Dutch Art Institute, affiliated with an institution that uses uh, feminist uh, discourse and then goes and reproduces exactly what it criticizes all over again in the most like clear way to tell you that there is a clear answer a moralizing clear answer on on what it is no there is not but um, what it does is that as a community you have to deal with it you have to find a way in which you situate yourself in front of it and mainly you cannot put yourself on the good side of history 
you're implicated, just we are all implicated here, it's just that here it's easier to say, yeah, well, no, the occupation is in Israel, I'm not taking part of it, you know? Like, so I think that that's kind of the, the interesting thing about the die because basically one of the th decisions that they made after we graduated is to not have a building. Um, that means that people who want to study the die, they can stay, first of all, in whatever country they are, so Greece or um, uh, England or wh wherever they want, and you all meet in different places in Europe. Now we don't travel to far away places, just within Europe. Um, but, and of course we can say, oh yes, so we're not contributing to the gentrification force of art of having a one location, but then we're contributing to even worse the gentrifying force, and we're much more neoliberal, if you want to contextualize it on a financial aspect, we're much more neoliberal institution than any other that stays in one building and keeps on reproducing the same kind of uh, measurements, but what it makes is that you cannot be, you cannot yourself contradict the fact that certain changes economically and politically are happening and you're part of them, whether you're staying in one place and kind of keeps on what is kind of uh, already ac being accepted as a norm, or do you co continue developing and you kind of work with the problematics that it brings, right? Would you say that in a way that uh, including theory in art practice uh, when you're actually being engaged, legitimize your position more than when there's not this like um, input of theory and of acknowledgement and of uh, complete, like let's say, contextualization of something. I, I think that the question of legitimacy is a very hard question. It's more of an existential question rather than uh, theoretical. I think that. Um, um, well, I think it also taps into what you were saying before about. Um, you know, art being subsidized a lot, or subsidized, being cut a lot uh, in its subsidies. And I don't know how you say it, but I do feel that theory is sometimes added to, you know, to deal with that feeling of yes. um, having to position yourself, but also indeed Participate um, in something which is yeah. beyond your individuality, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, it does validate yourself on a, a private level, but also like, as, as we said, like it validates you on mm -hmm. a diploma level. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that also if, if to kind of get over it for a second and to see that this is the conditions where we're in, just like this condition of traveling or condition of being privileged and stop criticizing that, but actually like, acknowledge that this is the location from which we operate, then suddenly you have a different tool uh, to work with. Because if we're, you had like this talk about copying, and if we're not talking about originality in art anymore, and we're not talking about subversion, this inherent ideas that we're gonna subvert uh, the society, but we're actually completely implicated in capitalism, and completely implicated in neoliberal kind of policies, and, and uh, private and public funding, and um, the market of speculations, and things like that, suddenly you kind of, you have a different agency, because instead of saying, oh, all the bad things are there, you're kind of saying, okay, but if I'm an agent of change, if I'm a social agent, uh, within this very complex situation, then suddenly you have, a, you have an agency of a different kind. Does it kind of remove any responsibility on you, though? Is that kind of going, then, I, you know, I accept all these conditions and I'm just going to work within them. Is it going to remove any... I feel like I'm kind of a bit confused yeah, by what yeah. you're saying, because you kind of are... You have a critique of it, but you're kind of going at the same time, okay, this is what this is how it is, I'm going to accept it and work within this system, am well, I wrong? Well, yes and no, because um, I think that it raises completely new responsibilities, it gives you completely different tools, it gives you a completely different... Um, like, the autonomy, the notion of autonomy, uh, it's not anymore only within your studio, it's, it's, it looks on your position as an individual, as, as a financial unit, as well, completely differently. I think that, um, I think it raises your responsibility, the understanding of it. I think that, um, yeah, like, for example, um, when it gets to getting funding from somewhere to do, an, to, the, to do an exhibition, I will choose to pay people rather than to uh, uh, buy, uh, buy uh, material for a lot of money that will be just um, disposed after that, only in order to produce a certain aesthetic experience. 
I think that it, it creates a completely different set of responsibilities that are actually much more relevant to the situation after you situated yourself where you're actually at, not where you want to be, or what, you're, what idea you inherited of where we're at, you know? I guess it's kind of a double thing that we were talking about earlier as well. It's like on the one hand, you're becoming aware mm -hmm. of this mechanism, like theory is becoming, it's getting more and more a place within the arts and um, getting to certain degrees is becoming more and more a thing, um, which doesn't mean it isn't giving, you know, great directions to people's practices, um, but at the same time, so it's like you're becoming aware of that, and so with that awareness, with that knowledge, you can, um, you can, you can work with that with a certain responsibility. But yeah, there, there's this tension between yeah. what you're saying, this legitimacy of it, which is kind of dangerous, um, but also the enrichment that it uh, provides. And then I think that, like, again, in a, we, we're talking about a very specific engagement that we experience with the Dai, while um, in other masters, um, the engagement <coughs> with theory and the relation to theory is different. Um, we can also look at like the collapse of disciplinary kind of uh, roles in art that used to there used to be art criticism that came from literary criticism and then there was the artist and they had a certain dialogue between them and a certain uh, role of histori uh, histori historization um, while now the artist needs to validate its own practice by conceptualizing and so then suddenly there is a new kind of model of the artist which is the artist philosopher so what do you do do you produce uh, objects or do you only think what is there is a whole kind of new set of questions that comes up with different uses of theory so um, I think that we're also talking about a very specific way that we experience theory in practice within the Dutch Art Institute um, we also had the theory teacher that we continued with for two years that uh, helped us uh, concentrate on our specific thesis with our specific subjects that dealt with our specific uh, practices. So I think that, um, yeah, so I think that what we're kind of trying to um, f feel here or trying to, to tell about here is more like the, how being in a problematic situation kind of uh, makes you need, needing to contextualize yourself. And so if some artistic practices and some master uh, pro ma master programs are situating and contextualizing you theoretically in art and critical theory. I think that the Dai does it with co contextualizing its own practice in a financial, political, financial, and feminist theory that also inherits other artistic kind of um, strains of con context. Um, so yeah, that would be. And I think that each one of us, like, I could ask you the same thing. You were, you can acknowledge that you're a white male. Does, yeah, so course. does it does it mean that you're, you're like, I don't know, like, as a, probably with all the discourses coming up in the art world right now, you become very aware of the fact that you are. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. But, I mean, you're also, be, like, just you'd be challenged to have a, a position on that as well. Yeah. And that's where I kind of wonder exactly, like, I, I get what you're saying, and I think it's completely, um, I think if you work in creative field, it's a, it is always going to be problematic, and you can have your ideas or whatever, but to a certain extent, you're always going to have to um, <coughs> sell out, or whatever you want to call it, for better use of the word. But I, I, I don't fully get what the position is. Because it's so, like, is it a critical position of this, the model, like the political and financial model? Or is it just a kind of, um, is it like, in a, is it just, or like, a, you know, like a, is it just an accepting it and, and working within it? Is it working within it for the sake of working within it or to uh, criticize it or to change it? Or that's what I'm kind like, of confused about. I think that it's very interesting actually like to look at the, like, a bit um, alienated for me, like the white male figure. You will always be the white male. Your kids uh, yeah. most probably will be white male born sons, right? Like, let's, let's say that way. You cannot change the fact that you are producing something, but within that reproduction, you can still create changes. How you will educate, how you will choose, what discourse do you will, will you choose to have with the people around you? how you will, um, yeah, what kind of uh, 
uh, positions you as a, a white male will take in every space that you are. Like, you know, so I think that this is exactly the same for me. Like, I'm always going to be with an Israeli passport, having, like, the weight, especially in the art world, having the weight of occupation of Palestine and many other things, and Zionism, on me, like, whether biographically or just, like, by, by passport. Um, I can choose to criticize it, but on the other hand, I'm not going to join, I'm not going to join the, the BDS, the Boycott on Israel. Why? Because I'm going home there. I'm going home, my parents live in Jerusalem, in a house that was evicted by, of uh, Palestinian people, and this is part of who I am. It's a complex uh, position. It's a complex position and it's not, um, and, and it's not black and white, and I think that this is where, like we can talk about feminism, that it's not, there is no one closed answer to your question. There is a set of choices, there is a set of uh, decisions, actions, um, I chose not to be an art, art practitioner. It's like when my teachers at the photography department loved that I printed like terror attack um, f photographs and they were printing it uh, two meters on seven. Like I, I, I chose not to participate in it even before I went to that. You know, I think that it's constant negotiation and just so like. You're saying kind of like, yes, there is critique, but there's also parts. Um, acceptance, or I'm not sure if you would use that word, um, because that those are the, 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 the set of conditions. That yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but, and I think that also in your practice, it's, it's mm -hmm. very apparent, sorry, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I wanted to ask you, so you said you were attracted to the die after being in Cairo and watching the, the demonstration. In the world, yeah, I wouldn't, from a distance. I, would, I wouldn't say it was that oh. direct. No, no, of course, but it started <laughs> after that. listening. <laughs> it started after that. And yeah. I was wondering, how would you position yourself now compared mm -hmm. to back then? Because then maybe also that tells like what mm. this like approach yeah. changes. Yeah. It's like, so this example, yeah. how would you view it so, now? So, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, so I came back to the Netherlands. Um, to do the die, and um, so I wanted to confront myself with with Dutch um, history, with uh, my Dutch cultural background, um, and so focusing in that sense on Dutch institutes. So at the die, <coughs> hello, there yeah. is an opening in the pavilion. Right oh my God, now. it's every so minute. There's <laughs> and wine bar as well. <laughs> Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so at the die, I, um, I I used my time to focus on um, on how how I relate in this Dutch context and how I relate to Dutch institutes who speak about history and culture. Um, for example, there's the Bronbeek Museum in Arnhem. Um, there's the Volkenkunde Museum in Leiden. And then I ended up writing my thesis about the. Um, uh, the exhibition history of the Tropen Museum here in Amsterdam, um, and the die, like Sonia mentioned, um, at the die you usually do not work towards uh, an exhibition, but you get these twenty minutes uh, spaces to um, share your ideas. So I kind of use those as um, lecture performances, um, and I thought that was a very valuable way to have to articulate my ideas quite cl clearly to an audience. And um, uh, and it's also it's it's a momentary thing, right? It's not it's not this defined thing that in the end um, is presented uh, as in an exhibition. Um, and I think that influenced my my work, where I'm still using performance in my work, um, and you know, kind of a more fluid way, less object material oriented, um, and. And in terms of my position, I think, I feel now that I have a position, and I'm not wondering, what am I doing here? Um, I have a position here, from which is still you know, evolving, and it's a constant process. Um, but then, yeah, I feel like that's a, that's a more, um, how do you say, it's embedded. Yeah. I think that also, like, with your question of what kind of art it produces, or what kind of, like, thing that 
um, when you do have a position, suddenly you are able to propose things towards how to change it because you're suddenly, you are in your body and you can look forward towards a future and not necessarily a utopic future, but a really practical, like what can be uh, implemented then when I'm becoming like this white woman from the Netherlands, right? Like, yeah. um, so a lot of, a lot of the, um, I think, aims of, of that we see in each other or the way we, we look at art nowadays and the conversation about it is like, what is the proposition? Okay, so we, because there's this modus operandi of critique in art of like, this is bad, this is bad, this is, this is where all the wrong things are happening. And then suddenly, like, when you're saying, okay, I'm this complex location, and from this complex location, I can propose this thing. And it doesn't have to be, uh, yeah, a financial model or, but like it's, and, and it becomes because you're in this very uh, intense social uh, relation in this one week where you're the die. So these propositions also manifest themselves in front of the people that you're with. So it becomes um, a social dynamic that in itself is a proposition to how can you be beyond your identity politics, beyond your, um, yeah. Would you say then that when art encounters theory, it always has a politically engaged position? Because no. Because it has a certain, no? I, I think that, um, it, like, we cannot generalize at this moment anymore when art encounters theory. I think that um, we specifically, or, yeah, in, in the die, and specifically us too, I think, because there were people who were, um, yeah, dealing with something else. Uh, yeah, there was also maybe in some cases it was more um, a poetic encounter. Um, Which could also be called political. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, I mean, I guess, I guess the word always is, yeah. is different. No, yeah, but that was referring to this position. And for me, as long as you take a position, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. it's politically as no. the first notion of political can be, well, yeah. but it's more like as, as, as like when you take a position, then you're also yeah. facing something else, or yeah. facing something. And at all. and you're also taking kind of um, you you're acknowledging your role as a social being, and then it becomes political, definitely. Yeah. And I think that like to begin with, if we go back into like uh, Kant and Schiller and the idea of like aesthetic. Um, judgment and aesthetic reflection that there was like the political kind of um, your way of better yourself morally right like, so we're not there we're not in the 18th century but um, I feel that it's also kind of we there, there is always like this or not always there is um, there in contemporary art we find a lot of futile um, deal uh, ways of dealing with the political um, and I think that what the die creates uh, for us and what we're talking about or trying to kind of point out is a different way of relating to what political is. And one of the things is to encounter, in, like incorporate yourself as a political subject. So in that way, I would answer, yeah, because you're immediately like, because you're in a social environment and this environment is become like travels through very problematic situations, you, you're being implicated in a political conditions to which you need to understand who you are in a group, uh, who you are in the art scene, who you are in the art world, because we're also like working with high uh, institutions or curators or practitioners or researchers, yeah. You both went to the retail, so you both also experienced like the bachelor and what kind of um, structure it had or how much theory you, were, you had input into your work. I mean, I, I heard graphic design is a pretty like, uh, ritual um, bachelor towards the theory that you have, but some other are well, like, more or less like, uh, strong in that sense. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you felt like you had, I mean, it was back in time, but I don't know if that changed too much, maybe it did. But did you feel like you had like, the, the, the input, uh, an, an input of it that gave you a taste for it, or that gave you possibility to also wonder about it, or were you, I don't know, did you find it was a felt ground also for this kind of like fiction that you had later in another institute with more? Mm. <coughs> um, yeah, I I, when I think back of the graphic design department, I don't, I don't recall having much very theoretic um, input. Um, I was though myself interested in it, so from myself I was reading and I was you know, 
trying to associate um, uh, projects with that. Um, and then there were some, uh, um, you know, public things like uh, Studio yeah. Generale, the, that was already there as well. Um, and I do kind of feel like when I was working in Paris as a graphic designer, I wasn't that much dealing with that, and it was these projects that sort of brought that back up. Um, so for me, my experience with Elite Felt is that it, it was there slightly, but um, very, very minimal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think you said earlier as well, like you kind of wondered, <coughs> oh, it seems so uh, separate. Yeah, you know, but it was more like an, an overall observation towards yeah. um, main, like, a, because I didn't know about it yet. Before, but like mm. main European art school. Yeah. But yeah. it's also yeah. like wondering, like at the example I gave earlier this morning to one of my teachers when back in France when I was doing humanities, I had absolutely mm, like lots of theory but not, not creative writing. And when I arrived here and I had like, um, uh, like an, an, an enormous amount of creativity but not so much theory yeah. input. Yeah. So it was kind of like also making me question, like, is there's also um, a taboo about uh, art being theoretical because then mm -hmm. it implies a certain kind of elitism, mm -hmm. or it implies a sort of, uh, as I mentioned before, willing to legitimate or willing to, you know, right. as we talked about, like, these notions of, like, art getting funded, PhD, whatever it is. But I, I mean, for me, because it's a really pure interest, I was thinking, like, when it doesn't, like, uh, related to money or to legitimization, um, why do I appear like a, an intellectual in an art world when yeah. I'm just interested in what theory can input in my work? Yeah. Why is this this categorization of like mm. if you not maybe not this categorization but this idea of like if you are in art school and you have this aim to also include, then all of a sudden you're not an artist anymore. Mm. You're a curator. You're a, criti uh, a critic, yeah. But there is this like dichotomy a bit yeah. that I felt, yeah. Which I was wondering a lot about. I was yeah. like, oh, maybe I'm just not in the right school. Maybe I should indeed do art theory. Maybe right. I should indeed do something more theoretical. Yeah. But then I'm thinking, uh, I guess artists are also the people who are the most uh, embrace, uh, who can embrace the most, like having a criticized eyes towards all their people's work because they are in themselves initiating the creation. And I don't believe that it's someone who knows everything about the book, but has never like done something like uh, materially that can talk about it properly. I mean, of course right. she does, but it's yeah. not like two separate work. No, exactly. It's almost as though you could see theory as a sort of material as well, right? And some would veer towards, towards that material more than others. Um, but it would be a shame if it's seen as, oh, then that's not art, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what you're observing, yeah, it's... It's, I find it really difficult to answer right now because I'm my practice has evolved um, so much in that direction and but I must admit that sometimes also just after the die I felt you know I would say in Dutch to people that people would ask me what do you do and I would say I'm an artist you know and in Dutch you say kunstenaar and it just sounded so I don't know so loaded and so something that I'm not really um, or perhaps not what they might think it is, and but then, I, but, but, but then what am I? How would I describe it? And um, so I have felt this thing a bit where I'm like, yeah, I'm a bit in, in between. Or, um, but at the same time, I'm definitely not an academic, you know. So um, on the one hand, I think that these categories they are becoming more fluid, but we seem to always need to have these labels, right, to understand what someone is doing. Um, I think it's interesting, like, in that way to bring... I think, uh, would yeah. you like sorry, to say sorry. something? No, I had another question, actually, because, like, we're talking about this sort of, like, dichotomy between uh, theory and art practice, but, like, isn't, like, practice always already kind of, like, informed by a certain kind of theoretical framework? Yeah. Like, it's not that there is, like, we have these two separate things and now we're producing an encounter between them, mm -hmm. like, you're always already kind of like 
working within a certain horizon of meaning, and that's how, like, even, yeah. even when you try to sort of, like, be anti-elitistic and sort of, like, try to move away from some theoretical models, you're still working with a certain theory, right? Yeah. Like, you have a certain yeah, theory about what is elitistic, is. what is what is sort of, like, pop, what is whatever, like, you're still working within a certain I kind of, like, that, framework, yeah. right? And it's We're about always participating so this, in the conversation. The question is, is this, like, what kind of theory we're talking about? Are we talking about academic theory? Are we talking about sort of like institutionalized models of theory? Yeah. Are we talking about like theory as in a kind of like more broader sense? Well, this is the thing. It's theory, I do think it's much broader than just exactly. a text. Yeah, right? and yeah. I think that like what, what we're trying to kind of, <coughs> like what I, what I thought of saying is like we can look at the die as an artwork that implicates um, theory as a practice mm -hmm. and theory mm -hmm. as a model as well as, theor like as, as well as a way of generating itself theoretical knowledge. And I think that the problem that you encounter and, and, and like um, that Miriam mentioned is like this, the fact that the models that we inherit are disciplinary and uh, disciplinary thought is a very patriarchal uh, dual thought of there, everything has a very clear closed category of and, and a clear discipline and a clear uh, definition that has a start and an end and if you want like in if you actually look at feminist knowledge it's actually it doesn't have these borders and I think that this fluidity suddenly like um, is something that is being experimented with in a different ways um, at the die and I think that um, there is this multidisciplinary transdisciplinary cross disciplinary there's all this uh, ways of trying to define and to grasp and to so I think that like also like this idea of theory also to build a chair as you say there is a theory to that of how to build a chair that will be uh, that will sit clear but um, one of these uh, problems of like margining like this um, academic professionalism and art practice which supposedly is free and undisciplined um, is somewhere which is still in, in an undefined dance so there is no one way, and there shouldn't be one way of talking about it. But I, I do, I do relate to what you're saying. But then I'm thinking, like, if indeed we're all like uh, inspired and like getting fitted by everything that's around us, um, it should also be, as you said, acknowledge what is it that is fitting us. You know what I mean? You know, because what I found a lot in art school is more like, oh. Um, I, I'm not into theory because, as you said, there's this like big, big word and big book about it. But it's also not acknowledging that everything that you're doing and everything that you're conscious of is coming from somewhere, and it exists in a structure. And maybe, maybe it's interesting to look at this structure. And this is more what I'm um, yeah. thinking. What I'm. But I think it depends also the art schools really, and also mm -hmm. the country, because I mean a lot of people who read the Riedfeld had another education of somebody who went to Germany to an art school, even though it's Eurocentric, side, uh, Euro, uh, Eurocentric let's say. Yeah. Uh, but I mean. Uh, <laughs> I had also an experience in Paris, and I found a very nice uh, theoretical background. And I actually found now completely on the other side where I say, okay, the theory, theory in all positions, you can grasp it as a material. But okay, as an art practice, where do I want to go? I love the studio actually because I'm so distracted with all the things going on. Where is my position? So I see the studio now after all the years as a kind of position, I take my position there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, perhaps it's, well, it's already two steps further. So I don't see this enclosement in the studio. No, I see it as taking a position, but uh, also if traveling, uh, being in a place, this is all site specific, uh, being with the theory, but it excludes also people who are handicapped, who mm -hmm. are depending on you or others. These things are also not, so this is another privilege. Uh, in our academies, in master programs, also later on, PhDs. What did, does PhD with the art world? So it's about funding. Also, yeah. So and I also I think it's broad. So I think people can. It's very. It's a good choice if you want to do it. But you are coming into an institution. You must be very aware that you are paid by this institution. Mm -hmm. So what is going on with your art practice then? Uh, so I didn't experience at all the offensive um, uh, I, I, an offensive mode of <gasps> theory uh, so like because I was not in the read field uh, but for me it's the other way around where do where I position myself 
Yeah? This theory, but really also with something, let's say, then more like Bauchgefühl, something more in the where, so in another That's way feeling. around, yeah? which don't exclude it. Mm. So, yeah. What school was it? Just sorry. That feeling. No, no, the ah. school you were in. Um, I was also at the Dutch Art Institute for a long time ago. I went to Paris. Yeah. I was in the Col National Super de Beaux Arts. Oh, yeah. I went by the other way. I was wondering. Yeah, and I was in Vienna and I was in, in Germany. So I did a whole okay. travel. That's all different things. So, uh, yeah, just to say that it's the same thing on different kind of uh, perspectives. Yeah, or maybe, or maybe say that it's completely not the same thing and it has so many shapes and it has so many positions for each person there is, but um, not in the sense of maybe it's not about the fact that um, I, I think that what, what I like about this conversation and what I'm trying to come across is that it's not anymore about what one person produces and that everybody is in awe of that one genius but that actually each person has the freedom, and this is our biggest privilege, to choose how to situate ourselves in the world. Well, I have a very provocative... Uh, yeah, please. Why, like an art exhibition, huh? I come to the conclusion, it's nice to present, this yeah. is my art lecture, <laughs> this is my lecture performance, great, 20 minutes, okay, I do it. But what I'm, you know, where, where I am, why not doing an art exhibition? You know, why, why not, actually? But this is your... Something? So why is it provocative? Because I'm saying, like... Do whatever you want. If that's what is your freedom, ex exercise your freedom. Do whatever feels right for you. Um, I think that like our politics can only start from our surroundings. Um, yeah, create the communities you want around yourself, around your work, around your practice. Invite people to your studio. Don't invite them to your studio. Like whatever feels good for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not more about you know personally. What I mean, it's also about institution. How. Institution like the Reedfield Art Academy, yeah. art institution, how they progress, how they transform. Yes. Huh? So you could say the other way okay, if I do only the presentation, why not both at the same time? Or perhaps the presentation is then the art exhibition. Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, I think that it's we have like these ephemeral practices, right? Performances and uh, um, actions as, as uh, art and, and different things that, that exist within a, like time-based uh, actions. It's something that was in the art sense, concept, sense conceptual art, I think, basically. Um, why, like, I, I don't think that there is, like, why not? It's one choice. Just like in the Das art, you have um, another model of critique and, and feedback and, and I'm talking about here, and in Germany you have uh, one professor that you stick with for seven years, or uh, um, some schools, um, and, and I think that there is no, um, I think the, the, yeah, like, what, 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 where is the question? There is no question here, actually. There is no why not, because this is the choice of this specific school. The Sandberg is having uh, different exhibitions in different locations for the graduations. Um, yeah. I do have a question for two persons who are actually in the art and research now. And uh, I, I'm just curious because I did not go there, but I'm, I'm wondering, just to introduce you yeah, to art. Yeah. Maybe you know the art and research. Yeah, yeah. I was there. I oh, okay. Know, well, maybe also you can tell us how, because I know that from what I talked with, from, with Pola, it's supposed to be a program where academics encounters a uh, student from the Rietveld to create an encounter and do this like arti artistic research. But I don't know how further on she has introduced it to you or how does I've it... I've only had the program for a few weeks and it's really hard for me to like divorce my impression of the art and research program from my general impression of being at the Rietveld because I'm here every day, all day. So there's like this process um, going on. And before I came here, I thought, I felt like I was worried about not getting out the theory because that felt like a leg that I wanted to go into. And now I'm like almost overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. With theory? Yeah. But because of the program you're attending, or... Like, I'm doing a theory class with fine arts, um, doing the art research program, and there are, like, these open lectures, like this mm -hmm. conversation we have now, the open summer, uh, like, or you can, like, engage, not just... What department are you? Uh, I'm in VAV. VAV, okay. Uh, and then, like, the reading and the studying and the practice that I have myself, it feels like there is no time <laughs> to do um, art. <laughs> and, and like while you were talking, I would, or this conversation was happening, I was thinking about like 
when theory informs art. So, so there is this, there is an essay, or there's a theory, there's a um, leg of philosophy, say, um, speculative realism. And we use that to, like, how do you say, like to bear Support. the weight of the artwork, to like have it made mm -hmm. just by the artwork, or like situate it. Um, and lately I've been thinking, but if that's what artists, contemporary artists need to do, where are the new ideas gonna come from? You know, in academia you use, you write a paper and you use other papers to prove why this is legit. So, like, something radically new cannot happen because no matter how much you critique it, you're still situated in this house built on so many white dead men. But yeah, I think it's it. Yeah, sorry. I think it's an interesting discussion because would you ever be able to like come up with a totally new language? The language, to create a language you like need to drag from other mm -hmm. things because you, you, you cannot just come up with this extreme unique idea out of nothing or do you believe that? I don't know, this is what I'm thinking about lately like so lately I've been working with like, um, now I'm going to use a term again, um, embodied cognition or like um, thinking without language, mm -hmm. like thinking through your body. And um, I, I have a few friends, or like my favorite people, at least them, who I thought were like amazing artists, all left. They felt excluded or sometimes like bullied by teachers. Um, and they had a type of like raw talent, or so like language that is so specifically theirs, and they might not be able to speak about their art, but the art is like, it's present in some other way. And I'm, lately I'm thinking, like, where do these th things come from, and are they different? And are we suffocating this kind of, like, non-linguistic mm. practice? Mm. Or this I found other? it very interest interesting, also because, yeah, also sometimes words are missing. Yeah? So you talked also about the global, uh, of, of a group, which is very interesting. Yeah, we are, say, we are this group, uh, or let's say feminine, yeah, to put it in groups. But myself, I also thought, okay, what do I find in this artist? Why I, I'm, I'm so into this work, for example? Eh? And often it's the position out of, of it, which is then textualized in the theory, but perhaps not of the person himself, although he or she will be aware of it. Eh? But it's not his whole academic world. It's but then, then the question would be, um, do you only encounter it in museums and within the art institutions? Or would art institutions, whether it's schools, museums, or galleries, will define that this is art and this is, as you said, these people that you really found something in yeah. them, they actually left they, the institution. Exactly. Mm. Now, because now what they do is almost like considered outsider art. Exactly. Well, it doesn't matter. You still, you yeah. still categorize it now to what it is. Um, the, yeah. Yeah. No, I, w I just wanted to address this kind of like feedback loop between theory and uh, artistic practice, which you're telling. And it, what it, it points is precisely to this idea that you need to have like a meta position, like you're using uh, theory to sort of like crit critique or understand your art, but you also need to critique the theory itself. Like you need to step even behind. Like mm -hmm. you, you you use theory to step to get a step behind your art, but you need to get another step to sort of like reflect on the theory you're using, right? Like it, it's kind of like you shouldn't, you shouldn't, because like when, when you work in academia, for example, because I come from a, a cultural analysis department uh, from the University of Amsterdam, and uh, I work with ASCA, uh, like you're like, you know, like from time to time there's always going to be this wave, you know, like we have the, like, the Dresian wave, you know, speculative realism, whatever, and like you, you see how everybody is like writing papers about, you know, Deleuze, whatever, but like you, you, need, to, you need to kind of like also challenge this this sort of like, pre the predominance of this sort of like model. Uh, and you, 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 need, you need to have a, this meta position and you kind of like need to work to, to find your own voice, sort of like. Mm, you know, like yeah. if, 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 if this doesn't work for your art practice, then you need to understand why it doesn't work. And for that you might need more theory, you might need to get acquainted with sort of like more kind of like uh, linguistic, deconstructionist, whatever kind of like models of theory. but. That it, that it, like you, you still kind of need to stay in the realm of theory, I'd say, if if, if you want to go against it. And and I think that the interesting part, like <clears throat> to, um, I can tell about my experience of 
uh, first of all, getting to the, like, first of all, you, you become overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge that there is that you, you don't know how to, you're going to gra grasp it whatsoever, how your head will come for it. Then you understand that the more you understand and the more you read, you will understand even more what other people are talking about. Then you start to identify with one or two or whatever uh, writers, uh, stream, or I was really into accelerationism. I even wrote my thesis oh my about goodness, it. I wouldn't stop. <laughs> Those accelerationists. Yeah, I was really like, um, and it took about a year after I graduated from the die to start understanding that I'm only undressing from all of those and I'm starting to find my own voice. Mm -hmm. So it's a really long process of kind of like mm -hmm. being, um, yeah, becoming an individual body within a conversation that so many people are talking and some things are exciting and some things are alluring and some things are really like talking to your gut, but um, actually you understand that it talks to the gut of so many people, so <laughs> probably you're not so special and all these megalomanic thoughts you have about you understanding the world is like really uh, gonna step off, so. But I think also this, this, this thing that you said, like there's all this theory and then maybe the your work or your practice sits on it and what does it actually produce or what does it actually add or contribute and um, I do think there's a lot of theory generally that is already out there and that you're then you know maybe using or that feels relevant to what you're interested in um, and then maybe there's only a small bit of that that you're like oh but maybe there's something there, what I in this one sentence <laughs> reel into this art practice of mine, and then you know make an association with something else that I found, and I think it's these little steps that that you know they're not life changing, but they are. I think they can produce you know new forms of theory or your own at least your own theory about something that you're working with. Yeah, I wanted to also say like when you I, I really relate to what you were saying. And um, in the beginning of the year, I, I wrote a book that was really like mind blowing for me. I don't know if you have, maybe you have found it. It's Art as a Thinking Process. Mm. And um, I don't yeah. know who wrote it, but it's basically just like more mentioning in general how art with input of theory or just art being contextualized in any like particular or historical, um, what, what it generates in general. And um, they're making a lot of um, comparison with like uh, art as a thinking process and uh, science as also a thinking process in general. And it, it, I was really stuck on, on this book for like some reasons because um, I could relate a lot, but also sometimes it problematizes what you just brought also. It's also like when you have all of this like background of thoughts, then how do you, how do you get like um, outside of it? And then I, I just like randomly met uh, a friend of, of my brother in, in the party who was doing a thesis, a PhD in, um, in science in neurosciences. And then words, he was talking about his practice and I was talking about mine. And I just um, kind of understood that whether it was in art practice or in science, there's always this thing which is about, because you were talking about language and about going forward, it's always about um, making suppositions about things until you might, in a way or another, justify it within your own practice or to a broader audience. And he told me, I'm not working with like precise knowledge. Um, I of course do have the precise knowledge that people have wrote about before, but then I'm just making suppositions. Like, is this gonna work? Is this? And of course it's very different because things might be proven in science and it's different in art. But there's always, I mean, what helped me to also see the like, um, you know, that, let's say the end of the tunnel of this theory thing, is also thinking that as she, as you mentioned, this is kind of like there's this sentence or these things that's going to trigger you in the sense that you think that there's there's an, a door to open in this, and yeah, maybe it doesn't it doesn't answer your question in the sense of language mm. and of but it's more maybe it, it was also a thought that I had toward theory, and this is also a way I feel like I can more easily deal with it by seeing it, you know not seeing like a, an, a, a, a there's a, a wall <laughs> which is already built. But maybe there's a way, you know, to just like dig a small hole and see something after it, but while observing the world. I think there's also a canon, uh, a canon that uh, the moon is following, uh, like in 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 theory, uh, or in scholar writing a thesis or a PhD. 
Yeah? On science. And, <laughs> on science, yeah. yeah. And some, um, I have the impression that sometimes it's a danger because the super other possibilities, or if you have an artwork, if you only start to criti yourself theorizing so much that either your voice is then si silent, what is your voice? I mean, it's, it's a very interesting question. Huh? But do I follow this canon of theory, or do I get the, the right myself that I can make mistakes, and I'm completely, let's say, uh, now esoteric, you know, that I get catch out of this kind of cage also, because it creates also a cage, huh? so a lot but of is possibilities. There, there's an advantage to knowing it, or is it a... I I think, I think it's, it's a double sides of a medal. Of course, of course you want, I mean, of course you want to see where you are in a right. way. Huh? But <laughs> if you do this the whole time, the whole time, and you don't trust any step anymore, or you, you follow the canon, mm -hmm. you don't do something like yeah, other people, you know? Maybe, and maybe that's the danger of this, this idea of, of when it becomes a legitimizing thing that you feel like you need to do that or you feel like you don't count if you don't do it or and I this I feel like the danger of like yeah PhD I, I, I yeah I have a I have a background with people a lot in in university yeah? and see this now with PhD in art yeah, yeah? and a lot of people who stop who yeah. have a burnout who stop completely completely yeah? and it this hurts me a lot for them in a way yeah? mm -hmm. And then they are lost in world. Uh, yeah, they are but lost in world in economy. economy they are lost yeah. completely in. Yeah, but then I think that everybody deserves to um, the legitimacy as a human being and a practitioner to say he's burned out because he's burned out, and it's his choices, and he can make different, and he could make other turns after his life is not over because. Uh, maybe he took this or that decision in, in art career. But I think there's still taboos, huh? like taboos feminism. I'm not, I'm not convinced that they're completely free. No, because Chile Chuji Kagao never talked about mother artists. What are these mother artists? Artists as a mother, for example. So there are taboos I, in, every, in every little... So this but is I, I, I yeah? think that like, this, is, uh, this is also something, if, um, because if mother artists are interesting to you, I think there is a lot of... Um, produce theory about that, and if that's a conversation you want to participate in, bring into the visibility of your circle, it's, it, this is exactly what you can do. And then eventually, like... Um, yeah, I, I don't talk about myself only, I talk really about the institution or theory, you know, right, I mean, but, but um, what is legible, or in, also what is fashioned mm -hmm. in the time, what is going in a wave like you five years what later? What becomes visible? What is yeah, visible. where the voice is heard or not? It's also mm -hmm. a it's also follows yeah. every time. Who gets the stage and who does not? Yeah. yeah, because of course you can try to uh, to be heard to do your work. This is also art practice, <coughs> of course. Huh? But if we talk about institution, I find it's very interesting which way it was. It's totally, good. and also like institutions are not uh, in a vacuum. They are in a certain economical and political condition that um, things are being inscribed in a relation. So um, I think that what I've, I've encountered myself on my own self, like I did follow a certain canon and I did got super enthusiastic and, and I even got places with it, you know, like, but at a certain point you also, you, we are critical human beings that are very privileged to have a very high education, uh, overly educated for the workforce probably, and um, I snapped out of it, like, and it took some time, and even when teachers told me don't read this or don't read that, I still followed su su supposedly the wrong people, and I think that, like to give the agency to, even if within the art school certain things are raised because there is a certain fashion, eventually give the agency to people that they have the choice, they have the critical mind. And this is what art schools are kind of um, nor trying to nurture. And I think that maybe you could not answer what is the relation between art and theory in an art school or in an art institution at this very moment or in general whatsoever. And I think that it's a very individual negotiation that each one as an artist, as a practitioner, as a person that wants to have knowledge, will keep on negotiating. I but think, I think that these are also two different levels because you're talking more on the institutional level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think you're talking a lot on the individual level. But like I think that like you're talking about institutional level and how people are following uh, what's well, also, happening but also in institutions. 
present. Right. The institution chooses to put on the stage. Or mm. Okay, yeah, but then it has, like, the, the institution puts on the stage and individuals are taking it, right? So there is also the, yeah, that but, fact. Yeah, but if we're talking about the, mo the, the decisions that an institution makes and if, if that informs um, how, how people um, then consequently feel that they need to legitimize their uh, work in order to be seen or heard. Yeah, I think that I think mm -hmm. that the Netherlands are a good example for this because this is a totally over different topic. But um, when I went to the Rijks Academy this year, by seeing the work, you can definitely tell that it's like really politically and historically mm -hmm. engaged. And uh, this probably has a lot to do with foundings, which is another debate. But then it also um, put yourself in the situation where you're like, oh, so if I want to see myself as a creative or an artist later, which, um, which uh, models can I refer to? Which, uh, which artists have some visibility which I can relate to? And it's always this idea of like talking about something, I guess, which also is um, something at the moment. I mean, always about talking about something, but I don't know, when I went to the Rice Academy, I had this discussion about a friend of mine which is Dutch and knows more about the Dutch, let's say, and on arts and fundings, but policy. I can yeah policy. But I can definitely tell also in France or wherever else when I go to a museum, there's always you know this very um, not uh, not specifically in intellectualized notions mm -hmm. of art, but there's definitely this notion of like as you said positions and 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 then I guess it's also why I think it's a relevant question to ask nowadays because it feels like if you only do art for yourself or about your garden, then you better keep it in your house, you know? Like I had this discussion with this fr mm. friend of mine, which basically, as you said, we're not really fitting the school um, standards, let's say, because they're not making something that is maybe satisfying and what is, could be called a norm nowadays and what the school the wants. Moment, yeah. 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 yeah, and then, and then, and then it like doesn't make the art less valuable, but it, they do question it. And there might be on the horizon, a trend, which might or might not be coming, I'm not saying, uh, which has to do with other modes of producing knowledge. Mm. Because you're, you're talking about an intellectualizing something, I'm like, yeah, but maybe the most radical thing you could do is, was to stop. Mm. Or like the... But can you stop? <laughs> I mean, is it possible to stop... It's such a beautiful question, I'm not, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> but also, what would it bring to stop for you? If not just the question of stopping. But to stop what? But to stop actually, but like. I, <laughs> I really don't think it's possible to like step outside those. Of course, you can position yourself towards the trends, but will always be in a position towards what's happening. So if they choose to step out of Riedwald, they like position themselves like opposite Riedwald or whatever, but they still like in a relation somehow. And I think. You, you can choose to not have a theoretical way of doing things, but you can only do that because there is existing... I think you're describing a subject, like a, a human subject, who is still taking uh, the discourse into consideration. And there can also be a, a, a subject who is not taking the discourse into consideration. Yeah. Because they find that the discourse is weak. For instance, it's a totally fictional kind of well, I can say that uh, together with me graduated a very good friend of mine that during the Ritfeld times um, she was discarded by all teachers and was saying that her art is uh, bullshit and whatever she does she will never succeed and she was really grinded until the end. She won the graduation uh, uh, prize and like she has one of the most successful careers nowadays. Um, and up and running, and we have this discussion between myself, another very institutional curator, a friend of ours and her, um, that this, this curator says, well, you need to apply for this and this prize, while the person says, well, I don't want to, I, I anyway make, I have enough money to eat, I do what I want to do, and if I will apply for this art uh, prize that is very famous in the Netherlands, then like there will be a certain demand for me to produce a certain subject. So I think that it's also like, what is your ambition as an artist? What is it that you want to do? In what conversation do you want to participate? With whom? So I think that like 
what you're talking about, whether it's institutional or not, it's the question of autonomy of the individual. So even if you're talking about it on like a level of the institution, what is put forward or not. For example, the State League has this uh, competition about freedom of movement, and they made in their policy that a few black artists, the people of color, have to participate in the purchase of this of the work. We have a friend who was called for that those interviews, never mind if they passed or not, but for them it was one of the most humiliating experiences to ever participate, to be invited because they're a black artist. On the other hand, this is how discourse is being changed towards a more inclusive discourse. This is how the uh, state uh, uh collection will be changed, hopefully with a more people of color um, works. So there is always like a negotiation of how to make history, how to participate in it, and how to keep your autonomy and your choices and your critical self like within this practice. So I cannot separate uh, institutional level from the individual. Um, because otherwise it's just empty critique that positions us outside of trends, outside of conversations, outside of the fact that we are sitting in an art school talking about the relation of, between art and theory, um, representing a different art school. And I think with that remark we will stop the conversation, yeah. how do we position ourselves as artists?